Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with the well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You hit her and I drink with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what is your, you know, major? You slow your word major and it smells like cores, giving an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool. You reply, what's yours, she asks. Sniffs the air, toxicology. Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Where is she hurt your feelings? She asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. You date over a year, she drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in and share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains or two drink beers out on the day. Just drink beers just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There is a scruffy undersized being when Julia is interested in. She wants to bring one of the class. There's also an intimidating but gentle uh, German shepherd in another back of her. She just walking to that dog. Ma'am is an excellent dog. He loves wrestling with you and Park goes with Julia on the runs even though he's too big to bring to school. Julia still loves him the same man as a friend, child, pet. All rolled into one. 1979. You talk on the deck at summer 9 30 p.m. and heat radiates off the high deserts. What do you think about having kids? Kids are not very smart or good at much. I'm just saying if you have some a couple little idiots, that'd be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married to you. I would like that to say. These kids aren't going to be screwed up enough as it is. Probably this one. Their parents are hitched, you see. You're absolutely right. It's 1980. It's a Thursday night. And Julia's been four hours late. She doesn't call you to worry. You've been angry about the room. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's been clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets under the sheets. You ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty and being so angry. Ask her about her eating. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny peel of her sin. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans for research. She likes to draw all the places to go. She draws you. You pose and flex like a heap. You look awesome. Festival in town brings folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Mayhem runs away. Mayhem will move. Fuck the, the dog, Julia yells and gets flustered as trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker and beat his goddamn face in. Your arm gets cut up and you beat the guy to a pulp. You feel very tough. You curl your eyes out for the cop show up. Julia asks to take a different path from the state for you. Say, okay, and you don't want her to go that way either. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. So she's department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Agree if she commutes back and forth. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says, that'll be hard, but if you don't want to move, you tell her not to pass it up. That's what she wants. She agrees to fly back to Boulder three times each semester. 
Julia sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. Jones lost on a colleague for borrowing a book that weren't important or that were important to her research. She didn't remember happily loaned it to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You, th you say that maybe you guys should talk to somebody about it. After seeing multiple doctors, many tests, they are worried Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. Keep it a secret for now. is getting older. He's getting settled down his back slowly. Slows down at night, usually walking the bar, see friends. Feels like nothing has changed. Julia goes back to the university. Julia affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. She has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She has sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get that Julia calls you a dope and your unburned children, little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into the bed and makes love. And after five minutes, she gets into panic, believing her dad's at the door. You tell her that her family, you tell her family, they are crushed and begin to make trips from her home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little strange things to brighten up the. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with a 24-hour care, a home that sits with you for a couple months, and you're determined to take care of her by yourself. I'd like to try to take care of my wife if something else to happen. Yeah, I'd like to try to help, you know, take care of my wife, if I can, you know what I mean? It isn't possibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, for, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you're worried about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. So you trust that she'll sleep like a rock. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice over there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off when you're in home bed by one in the morning. One night, you stop at a G DUI checkpoint. You blow it. Point ten, taken to jail for the night. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell Julia to come live with them. You don't argue. You just say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. You take it. And uh, that's how we end up here, everybody. since I played this game. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. OK. 
Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch! Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Alright, like I was going to say, this, this is a one of my favorite games. However, I'm not going to be talking a lot in it. As you've noticed, I'm doing a voiceover for most of it. Ooh, I shut up again. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Hey, sorry. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let nice. me quickly get you acquainted with the, the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to... Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are those fucking fireworks? I need you to confirm. Do you see them? I see them. Whoa. That's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Do you think you can handle that? Like, kick the shit out of them sort of straight? No, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Nice. Secure. Shut up. <laughs> Alright, so like I said, this is one of my favorite games. I've said this like three times now, if you haven't already got that. Um, I do like this game. Uh, it's got it's got a lot of powerful meaning to it. Sorry if you hear my computer. I know it's loud. I'll try to my best to tune it out in editing. Uh, but... Hopefully, we can figure out this stuff. I've got an overgrown trail here. Yeah, that'll happen. So I'm screwed when it comes to getting past it? Mm -hmm. Screwed until you clear yourself, yeah. Great. Nice. Well, if I come across some tools, I'll add groundskeeping to my ever increasing list of responsibilities. So, are there a lot of these out in the woods? Yeah, we got them all over the Shoshone. They saved us a lot of back and forth from the trailhead. Don't take all the good stuff. Yeah, all right. Hey, I found a note to a guy named Ron from some guy Dave. That's probably Dave Gaskell. He's completely nuts. Is that right? Harmless, but yeah. One of those, you know, fall off the grid and eat ants for a week type. Totally fucking cuckoo. Which is kind of what the job attracts. Down 
here, aren't they? Like I said, it's been a long time since I've played this game, but I thoroughly enjoy it. It's got a lot of things to offer. Again, like I said, I won't be talking that much. Let me know if, in the comments down below if you like the, uh, the voiceover option. And uh, make sure you hit the li uh, like button down below if you want to see more of these. So I think we're going to stop these kids down here with the uh, fireworks. So, hopefully everything goes smoothly. Nice. Solid. I forgot about that. You were out for a while because the sun's not went down. snapped coming down the shale slide you didn't break anything did you no i think i'll make Dude, it i hate when it Be goes careful to the for wow there's a, a big rock outcropping down here near the lake it's really something yeah makes for good camping there used to be a group of guys who would boulder out there a couple times a year. What happened to them? Don't know. Just stopped coming out. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. Just found where they're hanging out. They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. Oh, look. They decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. out to dry it looks like uh, two people uh, what if they're naked won't that be exciting look they're obviously still there so tell them off and then head back i found a bra a nudie pyromaniac remain professional uh there are uh panties there are what i don't want to say that word again why because you're 12 there's a uh, Yes? There are two naked ladies out here. Can you handle that? Come on, I like naked ladies, same as anyone, but there's, you know... Two? Yeah. I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. are setting up bottle rockets out here, okay? How? Because you're hiding in the bushes, spying on us? Give him a break, Lily. He probably hasn't seen boobs in 20 years. <laughs> He's probably still a virgin. Hey, just so you're aware, I confiscated your fireworks. Our fireworks? What? You did! Also, setting up fireworks out here isn't just stupid, it's illegal. Back the way okay, I came. Did I go okay? It went fine. Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Good. Thanks for going down there. Hey, 
I'm back near that big rock outcropping, but not sure how to get back. I'd head west, back towards the lake, and then turn north towards the canyon. What the hell? I'm doing a crossword and I figured out the theme. It's homonyms. Pears, pears, pears. The clue was couples peeling fruit. <laughs> anyway, hope you're having a good afternoon. Thanks. <laughs> nice. Is this an one? I'm lost. This is one thing about this game. I tend to get lost. Uh, R. I always forget I can run too. Alright, so I'm assuming I don't need it up here. Or I do, and I'm just slow and don't know where I'm supposed to go yet. Let's head west, back towards this. Right. And then head north. He gets laggy right there, I don't know why. Got it. I didn't take that long. I'm just slightly slow. Well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. I know, I just, I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that sort of a thing to, uh, to a minimum. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right, because of the lightning? It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home, and try not to get hit by lightning. I got hit by lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not going to strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide. Would you believe? Nice. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? I NFS tells that. people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. Used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. This cave is gated off. It's to stop spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, <laughs> Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so maybe its mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, oh, sorry, Hank. There's some guy out here giving me the creep. The creeps? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I... I don't think so. Henry, there's... there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's... outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's... it's... it's madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Okay, I get it. Fuck, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. What I was gonna say is, did you see how like it made me go somewhere so it could get darker outside so I didn't have to do any transitions? Little neat stuff like that is why I like this game. Like no no other game is doing that. And this game is older, I think. I don't know what. 2012 to like 2015, somewhere in there. Nice. My big guys. Where's my home though? Ah. Yes. You know, I don't think there's any fictional character I hate more than Forrest Burns. Henry, as an employee of the Forest Service, that is treason. Yeah, well, he really freaked me out as a kid. No. He inspired me to spend the bulk of my 30s keeping the wilderness safe. Do not just want to stay have a field day with you. Forest Burns, anyway. Well, that would be a pun, Hank. A glorious pun. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground outside of my tower. You right? Yeah. Look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell? You should get inside. Fuck me. Someone broke in. Hey, what? It just, they wrecked the place, threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker. Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. No, it's not true, don't you? My fucking sheets are gone. They stole your sheets? That's just mean. The place is trashed. I can't believe this shit. You hear anything yet? Okay, I put in a call. What can they do about it? Will they catch whoever did it? This is the Forest Service, Henry. They're not exactly Hawaii Five-0. Do you have any idea who would have done this? I did probably piss off the girls at the lake. Ugh, fuck them. Well, I'll have the Rangers keep an eye out for a couple of young women and question any they find. I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some, what, violent campers? Alright, that's where I want to leave this episode. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share if you like this video. Make sure you let me know what you like about it. Let me know if you like the game. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.